Good boy. When you give by mouth, expose it through the gastrointestinal tract, an antigen early on before the child's immune system is fully developed, that you what we call tolerize the child to not make a bad response against the peanuts. They become, quote, tolerant to the peanut. The earlier you go, the more likelihood you have of tolerizing the child. So if you have a, a, a much greater chance, you go from four to six. If you do it at a time when there's very unlikely that you're going to have a peanut allergy because you don't have severe eczema, you have just eczema, moderate eczema, then they figure six months, which is about the time that you start feeding child the kinds of foods that you could put peanut-based food in. We've always been told that given a child under three years, peanuts was a definite no, but now I can introduce peanuts into my son's diet, which is great news. If the mechanism holds true, it is conceivable but not yet proven that you could do the same thing with allergies to other types of foods. And so what will be happening over the next few years is that there will be studies with the same design of early exposure versus avoidance with other foods to which a child may or may not have a propensity to, for a, uh, an allergic reaction to. When you get an, al an allergic reaction to peanut, it could be severe, it could be anaphylactic, it could even lead to hospitalization and death. So that's the reason why we're feeling very good about the study that showed you might be able to prevent a significant proportion of the peanut allergies by this approach. Okay, and now using toes, we can't go over it, we can't go under it. He was a little unsure at first, but he seemed to like it. So if it means giving him some peanut butter every now and then to prevent allergies, then we'll definitely move forward with that step.